Welcome back to Investing with Confidence. I am your host, Joshua David, having a good time and talking about the financial markets and different ways the average investor can participate with the stock market, the, the futures market, the forex market, and options. Also, make sure to su subscribe to Investing with Confidence wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. So, Al, as we get into this next topic, it, it was it's retirement. Um, and a lot of people are searching for that day. They're, they're wondering, okay, when can I retire? And the key word is they're wondering when they retire. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing more and more people want to make that decision themselves. They don't want to wonder and hope they get to that day. They want to make that decision themselves. But there's a problem. There's a, re there's a problem with retirement accounts. I guess well, I, won't, I don't want to say retirement accounts. There's, there's, there's a problem with retirement strategies right. that people are getting put into. They're getting put into, and we've been talking about this a lot today, is the buy and hold strategy, which over time, it's not a very good strategy. There's, you know, there's a conditioning piece there. Brokers and advisors are conditioning people that a certain percentage, and I'm thinking everybody listening right now knows what that percentage is that they say is good in the markets. And their accounts aren't really tracking that. So I want you to kind of dive into retirement plans, the 401k, the IRA, what are some of the things that the institutions are doing that they're not doing themselves, but how can us as the average investor, I guess, really be more confident going into retirement with better techniques and strategies? Yeah, I, what's happened is that the uh, Wall Street firms have determined that the best way for them to approach retirement for their clients is to put them into something that they don't use. And it's it's basically something that uh, requires very little work on their part, but also uh, brings in a, a set amount of fees on a regular basis. And that's pretty much the 401k, the 403b. Those, those, that's a great uh, product for Wall Street because they will come to a company and say, hey, we're going to put together this retirement plan for you. And here's a, a, a list of things that you're employees can choose from. Typically, they're mutual funds, maybe some exchange-traded funds, maybe some 401ks now allow you to, to do stock. But it, most of them are, are based on mutual funds. That's kind of the go-to investment there. And what they're saying is, here's a list. Now your employees make their own decision. They make their choices as to what they're going to invest in. And if they want to make any changes, they make the decision to make those changes. Uh, but we're going to charge a fee. We're going to give them the the uh, the honor of controlling their own assets, making their own decisions, and we're going to charge them for it. What an honor, huh? What, what a great That's a business. beautiful thing, huh? That's a great business <laughs> model for them. And it really, when 401ks came into existence in the 80s, it just exploded the mutual mm -hmm. fund industry. I mean, you know, there, there are thousands of mutual funds out there. A lot of them came into existence after that uh, that period of time. So it's that's a great business model for them. But what they're doing with their own money is they're utilizing the things we just talked about. They're utilizing the futures market, the foreign exchange market, the options market. They're using that leverage to their advantage. And and then the problem with the 401ks, in, in addition to having kind of mediocre choices, they're high fees there. The fees that you're paying really for no or very little advice is is drawing uh, a significant amount of money away from what you could have when you retire. And unfortunately, when you reach that point when you retire, whether it's 65 or 70 or 75, and you realize that, you know what, I, I may have another 20 or 30 years left, but it doesn't look like the amount of money I have is going to make it that long. It's kind of late then. You don't really get a chance to go out and start a new career. So the number one do something now so you don't reach that point. Learn how to generate some additional money now using the financial markets if that's you know, and that's I'm I'm not saying this right for everybody, but a lot of our students have made that decision that they want to utilize the financial markets to achieve that that extra money. Because when you're working, once your bills are paid and you have hopefully a little bit of fun, you have to have money left over to start funding your retirement accounts because the money from those accounts comes from your income. So the really truly successful people in this country have multiple sources of income, but not multiple jobs. They're using things like maybe the real estate market, the financial markets, and they're utilizing those to their advantage while they're young and, and accumulating assets. But also when you retire, if you know how to generate income, if you know how to use uh, those assets, then why not utilize that in your retirement instead of taking money from a 
of the whatever you have in your 401k or 403b or whatever your employer sponsored plan is called instead of using that money and just drawing down from it maybe use that as a way of just generating additional money that you can utilize for your living expenses having some fun and then grow that account at the same time because when you retire the important things number one don't lose what you have options can be used as protection uh, build what you have so maybe you have a legacy to pass on down and then learn how to utilize that retirement money to you know help you pay your bills to, to bring some additional cash in and and those are the things that at the online trading academy we teach we go over uh, 401k management, uh, dynamic 401k management. We go over how to set up your own retirement account, a self-directed account where you eliminate those fees. And in those self-directed accounts, you can trade futures and Forex and options. You're right. I mean, that's the key thing is, you know, to understand those techniques and why the smart money, I mean, Al's referencing the smart money, the institutions, the banks, they're doing all, all these things. And that's why he, I'm glad he's talking about why they're doing them and what they are. These techniques and strategies, they're available to the public, but people just don't know how. And you mentioned the Online Trading Academy. They, they teach, um, you know, starts with knowledge and then it starts with skill building. You have to build the skills to be able to do that. And you mentioned self-directing. Uh, directing. What exactly is that? Well, self-directing is just basically setting up an account that you direct yourself and you don't pay any fees for it. And, and almost all the, the discount brokers, almost all the brokerage firms will allow you to do that. Just make sure when you're setting it up that, that you are setting up a self-directed account and then you eliminate the fees. The only cost would be a, a transaction cost. So if you're trading stock, for example, maybe there would be a commission. Most of those firms now are, are waiving commissions for stock. It's pretty cheap now to trade it's, these days. It's, it's cheap to trade anything, whether it's futures or Forex. Basically, with Forex, you're not paying a commission. They're just making their money off of the spread between the bid and the ask. And futures, very, very small. So the, the cost of doing the transaction really is, is almost uh, inconsequential these days. It didn't used to be. Back you know, 20 years ago, it might cost you two, $300 to do a, a trade. But one of the great things about the Online Trading Academy, Josh, is that that it provides education on all of these different assets. I mentioned earlier, people go out and they'll buy a book on finances or a book on diet. Well, the financial books that you're buying are probably geared towards one asset, one asset or one strategy. And that may not be the right one for you. So maybe you got to have to go out and buy another book or, or a third or fourth book, or you go to another seminar. Well, the Online Trading Academy provides education on all of those different things, and we can help give you some guidance on what might be the best one for you. Because when you, especially when you go into retirement, one of the things that is important is to know what the rate of return you need to have to live kind of your desired retirement life. And that's going to vary from person to person. I, I used this example a, a while ago. I'm going to use it again. Uh, if one, let's say there's two people that are both retiring. And one person's goal is to buy a yacht and sail around the world. The other person's goal is to buy a kayak and then paddle around a small lake. Well, the rate of return you need to be able to do those two different things is quite different. And, and the rate of return might change. The necessary rate of return might change based on your personal situation or what's happening in the markets. You're right. I'm glad you brought that up about needing more than just one strategy. And that's the great thing about you know our sponsor, Online Trading Academy, is they teach many strategies which are designed to teach you to make better investing decisions. Now, I think I want to continue the discussion a little bit on self-directing IRAs, 401ks, and different opportunities that people have with retirement accounts. Sure. But also, a lot of people just don't know where and how to get started. So I want to kind of guide people on how to get started. This is Josh and Al with Investing with Confidence. We will be right back. <laughs> 